Hi, I'm Gabriel Dukmaji, the City Smart Living Renovation Specialist, here with a little bit of information for you on condominium, HVAC, and water heating systems. So, we're located right now here in the heart of Arlington in uh, the Liberty Center in Boston, one of the newest buildings where we just sold this actual listing that we're standing in. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the way that the utilities in this unit work. So this is a newer building and what it has is a common source heat pump system in each unit. What that means is the building does not have individual exterior air compressors and uh, HVAC compressors outside. You have one big system that the building operates and then that runs plumbing through all of these units that are in each apartment or condo in the building. So, this is a uh, package unit or a common source heat pump and what it does is you'll see here there's a couple of hose lines coming into it they act as the same thing that you have in another like single family home system where the coolant goes inside and outside of the home out to the compressor and back in this does the same thing except it's doing it on a much bigger scale so basically the building has a chiller up on the roof and a, uh, and a boiler system. So what it does is the building is constantly circulating either water or coolant or whatever they're circulating, um, usually some kind of water mix, uh, through these lines. And it's like, as far as your unit's concerned, it's as if the weather outside is always about 68 degrees and your unit is only ever adjusting a couple of degrees or a couple up or down, depending on what you have your system set at. A lot of my clients ask me, well, I'm kind of kooky and I like to run the heat in the summertime because I always feel cold. Well, you can absolutely do that with one of these systems. It's not always the most efficient, but it's definitely something that you can do. It's not like in one of the large scale apartment buildings um, that you may have had like back in college where you didn't get any control over your HVAC system and the temperature in your home. That's not the case here, but it is a little bit different. The other thing you'll see is in this unit, we actually have our own water heater here local to the unit. That's not in every building. Everyone's a little bit different. Some of the buildings, because they have these big boiler and chiller systems, take advantage of that and the building will heat your water. Um, in this particular case, this is an electric water heater. It's lower capacity. You can see that it's kind of smaller, shorter to fit here in the closet. When we're dealing with condos, we have limited space. But it's one of the things that you're definitely gonna need to keep an eye on maintenance wise because if you don't maintain it, it's gonna cause you a problem. And let's be honest, it's a little bit different to get an HVAC unit or a water heater serviced in a building this big if you need to replace it. You've gotta make arrangements with a front desk to get up and down in the building. It's a lot easier to just take care of it and maintain it on a regular basis. So make sure you're changing your filters on your air conditioning system at least every 30 days. And then uh, make sure you're getting your water heater serviced at least annually. And you should be able to get a good lifespan out of them because bear in mind, this unit's not actually going to be working that hard to change your temperature, and the water heater is only running usually a couple bathrooms. So hopefully that was helpful information. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us here on YouTube. And I'm Gabriel Dukmaji for City Smart Living.